Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Trishanjit Kaur, Professor and Head Department of Library Science and Dean Faculty of Education and Information at Punjab University, Patiala. Today I am going to talk about the module History of Academic Libraries in India from Paper Academic Libraries. So student, the learning objective is to study the historical perspective of growth and development of Indian academic libraries in India. Now, history of libraries is a less explored area of research for the purpose of scientific writing of history of libraries, the understanding the nature of existing source material and knowing the art of using it is very essential. Sources are available in multiple languages, but mostly they are translated into English. Various formats of sources, contributors to history of libraries by foreign travelogues have been done by historians and also by library professionals. These records exist in various formats such as manuscripts, inscriptions, copper plates, etc. They are either original or foreign. The contribution of foreign travelogues such as Tibetan, Chinese, Muslim, Portuguese, English and other Europeans is highly useful. Some few noteworthy foreign travelogues who have given details about those times are Aitzing, Fahim, Hyunsa, Ali Beruni, Ibn Battuta, Minhaj, Firishta, Badoni, Afif, Bernier, Mandelso, Manricu Dilara, Martin, Count Noir. In addition to the contribution of the travelogues, the contribution of historians like Henry M. Eliot, John Dawson, Stanley Lane Poole, Ishwari Prasad, R. C. Majumdar, Jadunath Sarkar, B. D. Mahajan, Muhammad, Muhammad Zubair, J. S. Sharma, N. N. Law, etc. are commendable. In addition though scanty but there are articles written by the library professionals of present time also teachers, professors on history of libraries. But all said and done it is a very hard and challenging task to trace the history of any library whether it is academic library or public library because the research has to be based on original primary sources and that itself poses many problems and difficulties. Journey from past to present. The history of academic libraries can be traced into different facets, Eastern and Central India, Western and South India, university libraries in medieval India, libraries in modern India from 1757 to 1947, then important commissions and committees before independence, uh, academic libraries in India after independence and National Knowledge Commission. India could take pride in being one of the pioneers in higher education. The Takshila University, which is oldest in the world, has been in existence since even before the time of the Buddha during 414 AD in the city of Gandhara in northwest India, uh, which is now in Pakistan. It had an enrollment of 500 students and there was an excellent library having works on Hinduism, political science, literature, medicine, philosophy and many other subjects. Students, now on the screen you can see the picture of Takshila University, its ruins. Nalanda University, its name is derived from a Sanskrit term for giver of knowledge. It grew to be the most foremost Buddhist monastery and an educational center. It had disciples like Hyunsang and I Sing, and the library was huge. It was in three parts. Ratna Sagar, a nine-story building. The second one was called the Ratna Dodhi and the third Ratna Ranjika. Uh, excavations 
conducted by Archaeological Survey of India during 1915 to 37 and then again in 1974 to 82. Now with this exposed the extensive remains of six brick temples and 11 monasteries. Rest you can see on the screen. Nalanda Library had a rich collection of manuscripts on philosophy and religion, texts relating to grammar, logic, literature, astronomy, astrology and medicine. It included the Vedas, the Vedanta, the Samakya philosophy, the Dharam Shastras and the Puranas. The University of Nalanda specialized in Mahayana and its library flourished down to the 12th century AD until Bakhtiar Khalji sacked it in 1197 to 12,003 AD and set fire to the establishment of Nalanda. The story goes that the invaders, they asked for a copy of Quran, but the library didn't have it. So out of fury, they set the library on fire. I don't know how far it is true. The Sunday Express of 23rd February 2014 carried an interesting article, A University Under a Mount by Santosh Singh. Recent excavations have shown the site of a university a few kilometers away from the ruins of Nalanda in a place called Telhara, about which Hyun Sang is said to have mentioned in his writings. The Telhara project that started on December 26, 2009 has so far come across over 1,000 priceless finds from 30 odd trenches. It is said the Mahavira or university was built by one of the descendants of Magda rural Bimbisara. The excavation has so far revealed 11 cells of 4 square meters each and it is believed they were faculty quarters. There is evidence from the Gupta and Pala periods also. The Vikramashila Monastery, which was founded by King Dharampala, and it was 24 miles to the east of Bhagalpur, which is in Bihar, the, it had 3,000 scholars and a very impressive library. But unfortunately, this was also destroyed under the nexus of Bakhtiar Khilji. Other centers of learning are uh, Odantapura University, which was built in 749 AD. It is a model of first Tibetan monastery and unfortunately again this too became a victim of Khilji's fury and later Tarko Afghans raised a fortress on this site. University of Somapuri, famous like Vikramashila since the days of Dharampala from 769 to 827 AD. It had its own library with a rich collection of Tibetan translations, but again became a victim of fire in the middle of 11th century AD. It was later renovated by a monk, but could not regain its lost fame. Namadvipa, the last of the famous seat of learning, situated in the West Bengal at height of glory from 10 Six three to eleven hundred and six AD. It was very famous in that area. It was a center of intellectual excellence with rich library facilities. The library was destroyed along with the center by Bakhtiar Khilji. The next was the Vallabhi University, which is famous for its Hinayana courses of studies and had a well equipped library. The Nagarajuna Vidya Peet flourished about the 7th century AD and its library was housed in the top floor of the five-storied building of the university. It had an enormous collection on the Buddhist philosophy, particularly of the Mahayana school that Nagarajna had founded, science and medicine. Now, there is enough archaeological evidence that supports the existence of this 7th century university and its library. It had collections on subjects like botany, geography, mineralogy and medicine. It was a great attraction for scholars from different parts of India and from countries like China, Burma and Ceylon. After all this, 
if we see one pattern that emerges from the historical accounts of various travelers is that higher education was at its best in different parts of India, especially in eastern parts. These universities and their libraries were destroyed by Muslim rulers. Earlier, there were libraries in palaces of Muslim rulers. There is no evidence of existence of academic libraries except a library attached to a college at Bidar. It had a collection of about 3,000 books. Uh, Aurangzeb got this library transferred to Delhi to merge it with his own palace library. Muslim rulers had their own palace libraries actually. And the effect of fall of Indian rulers on higher education and the development of academic libraries was immense. There was establishment of formal academic institutions during the British rule. And in this, we cannot forget the role of East India Company and Christian missionaries who established the colleges in 18th century. First of all, the Calcutta College was established in 1781. Then came Banaras Sanskrit College in 1792 and the Calcutta Fort William College in 1800. All these colleges, they had their own buildings and the important landmarks are the Charter Act of 1830 for Fort William and uh, Serampur Colleges, the establishment of Calcutta, Madras and Bombay Universities and their libraries, Hunter Commission, Relay Commission, Calcutta, University Commissions, their contribution is immense. The library training programs, the establishment of inter-university board, uh, immediate result of the Charter Act 1813 was the CMS College in Kottayam, Hindu a Presidency College in Calcutta 1880, uh, Ravenshaw College in Katak 1816, Serampur College 1880, over 40 colleges with attached libraries were established by 1839 and the Presidency College Madras in 1840 and a medical college library in Bombay in 1845. The Charles Wood Dispatch of 1854 was known as the Magna Carta of English education. This is the most important document in the history of academic education. A bill to establish universities in India was passed in 24th January 1857. Uh, the establishment of three universities was decided based on the London University's model, which was basically uh, for taking examinations and no teaching was conducted. And three universities were established, Calcutta, Madras and Bombay. The Calcutta University got its library in 1873. Madras got its library in 1907 and Bombay University got its library in 1874. These were set up as an examining body and awarding degrees as teaching was done by colleges which did not form an integral part of universities. Important commissions and committees before independence. To study the situation of university libraries and the services there were many institutions and committees uh, which were set up uh, by the UGC and a few of them before independence and then after independence. Indian Education Commission, popularly known as Hunter Commission, was appointed by the British Indian government in 1882 to study the progress of education under the new policy adopted in 1854 by the East India Company and transferred to the Crown and accepted by the Secretary of State in 1859. Sir William W. Hunter in his report had clearly stated that the conditions of the libraries was in a very poor state and declared them hardly creditable. The Commission paid special attention to the colleges and their libraries and other facilities. The direct result of the commission was the establishment of Punjab University, Lahore, now in Pakistan, and Allahabad University, 
in 1882 and 1887 respectively but still the condition of the education and libraries remained in poor state of art from time to time various commissions and committees were set up to find out what was the situation in the university libraries at that time the relly commission which was established in 1902 paid special attention to the academic libraries and it found that the library is little used by graduates and hardly at all by other students the commission recommended good reference libraries should be provided in connection both with universities and colleges in order that students may have an opportunity of forming the habit of independent and intelligent reading the recommendations of relle commission also included in the university act of 1904 the calcutta university commission which is called the sadler commission 1917 it said strengthening of college libraries and training to students and teachers about use of the library university should have the services of a librarian now librarian was very important at this time who should have the salary and status of professor and ex officio member of the academic council now at this point of time the role of librarian was important and it was needed that there should be someone to help the users the indian statutory commission also the simon commission of 1927 reported majority of the university libraries as inadequate requiring great additions there were 12 universities in 1924 to 18 in 1947 the years between 1939 and 1947 were shadowed by world war 2 and they were bleak so far as university library development was concerned academic libraries in india after independence the actual process for the development of the university libraries in india can be said to have been set in motion with the appointment of the university education commission presided over by dr s radhakrishnan from 1948 to 49 which gave valuable recommendations the commission in course of its study of the academic libraries found that libraries were hopelessly inadequate to serve the curricular needs of a modern university they were ill housed ill stocked and ill staffed and were totally lacking in standard literary and scientific journals service was in the hands of personnel that had hardly any notion of the objectives of university education the annual appropriation for book purchase seldom exceeded the 10000 mark in addition the annual grant for these libraries was not sufficient therefore the commission recommended that at least 6% of the total budget of each academic institution should be set aside for the library only then will the condition of these libraries will improve it added that if institutions were not willing to allocate 6% of their budget to libraries they should spend rupees 40 per student enrolled the commission also suggested that more attention should be paid to improve the reference services in the university libraries the growth of university libraries since independence can be seen in respect of the initiatives taken by the central government considering the vital importance of higher education and role of libraries in the educational development commitment to fulfill the demand of higher education and the foundation of the UGC in 1953 by an act of parliament the ranganathan committee appointed by the UGC in 1957 made some outstanding recommendations which included standards for library building collection development staff and services and furniture etc the kothari commission also made valuable recommendations for this purpose 
but the role of the university grants commission deserves special mention because it has played a vital role by regularly providing appropriate grants and funds to all universities for development of libraries to purchase books and journals construction of new library buildings and for library equipment and furniture the growth has been slow and steady with the present number of universities at little more than 650 but it is not just the number that matters but quality too which needs a lot of attention especially now with the dominance of information communication technologies with the advent and application of computers the nature functioning and services of libraries have changed in a dramatic way computers are being used in libraries to process store retrieve and disseminate information this has redefined the concept of library from a house of books to a place to access most advanced media including cd rom the internet and other electronic formats of information resources today libraries are witnessing the network based era having connected to vast ocean of the internet based information the use of icts have placed the indian academic libraries at par with the libraries the world over the information for library network called the inflipnet set up by the ugc as an autonomous inter university center in 1991 proved to be a landmark to interlink the academic libraries it is involved in modernizing university libraries in india and connects these to a nationwide high speed data network the inflipnet promotes automation of libraries develops standards creates union catalogs of serials theses books monographs and non book materials provides access to bibliographic information resources creates database of projects institutions specialists organizes training programs etc almost all academic libraries especially university libraries they are members of inflipnet the center also developed software for university libraries a library automation software more popularly called as sol in addition to inflipnet several other national networks and library networks have evolved over the years the national informatic centers network popularly called the nicnet indonet arnet kelebnet delnet melebnet etc are notable these networks boosted the resource sharing and widened the spheres of access to information for users the rising costs of journals devaluation of indian currency and financial crunches being faced by libraries paved way for development of consortia the consortia are usually intended to meet the information needs of stakeholders in a homogeneous group the consortium approach began in india in 1982 with the emergence of the forum for resource sharing in astronomy and astrophysics this was initiated for sharing resources available in astronomy libraries the rising cost of journals devaluation of indian currency and financial crunches being faced by libraries paved way for the development of consortia the consortia are usually intended to meet the information needs of stakeholders in a homogeneous group the consortium approach began in india in 1982 with the emergence of the forum for resource sharing in astronomy and astrophysics called forsa and there are other important consortiums many many of them to name a few ugc infonet indest uh, helnet sera which is set up by uh, the government of india on 13th june 2005 first of its kind in the world and the mandate is to guide policy and direct reforms in education science technology 
agriculture, industry, e-governance, etc. It provides knowledge access, creation, preservation, dissemination, and better knowledge services. It is like a roadmap for the growth and development of academic libraries. National Knowledge Commission. The National Knowledge Commission, popularly known as NKC, first of its kind in the world, was set up by the Government of India on 13th June 2005 with a time frame of three years from 2nd October 2005 to 2nd October 2008. As a high-level advisory body to the Prime Minister of India, the National Knowledge Commission has been given a mandate to guide policy and direct reforms focusing on certain key areas such as education, science and technology, agriculture, industry, e-governance, etc. Easy access to knowledge, creation and preservation of knowledge systems, dissemination of knowledge and better knowledge services are core concerns of the Commission. The Commission and we say the future roadmap for the growth and development of academic libraries by imbibing core issues such as set up a national commission on libraries, prepare a national census of all libraries, revamp LIS education, training and research facilities, reassess staffing of libraries, set up a central library fund, modernize library management, encourage greater community participation in library management, promote information communication technology applications in all libraries, facilitate donation and maintenance of private collections and encourage public-private partnerships in LIS development, etc. The most important recommendation of NKC regarding university libraries is that by 2015, the number of universities should be 1500 to cater to the needs of the youth. This, it is believed, would enable India to attain a gross enrollment ratio of at least 15% by 2015. Increase in access to higher education does require an expansion in the number of universities and colleges. But the question is, do we need 1500 universities? The recommended number is not based on any detailed analysis as studied by Mr. Tilak that there is no clear rationale which is provided. Is it just about numbers or the focus of policy makers and planners should be more on the quality and affordability of higher education? Private players are making it a business. If we look back and from Takshila till now, the university libraries have come a long way. There has been growth and development in every sphere and access to reading material has increased many folds in number and in nature. University library is still a center of learning and research for its users and the library is the heart of the university. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. The history of academic libraries in India can be traced with the history of academic institutions. During early periods, the higher education was at its best in different parts of in India and academic institutions had well-equipped libraries. However, these universities and their libraries were destroyed by Muslim rulers. The academic libraries during the British rule had no significance in the academic life of the institution of higher education. The pivotal role that can be played by the academic libraries in the life of the institutions was recognized at the time of national reconstruction and libraries received the early attention of the government of free India after 1947. The growth of academic institutions as well as libraries has been very slow and steady, but libraries have become an integral part of academic institutions. Thank you.